Hello, I'm Zach DiVincenzo, President and Co-Founder of Juggerbot 3D. We understand the challenges associated with production 3D printing. We believe it's time to focus more on making good parts and less time dialing on process parameters. For instance, this drift, made with 20% glass fiber reinforced ABS, could require days or weeks to develop process parameters, redesign, calibrate, in preparation to print. What happens when you want to use the same material for another application? The operator more than likely needs to redo the entire process before starting the next job. It's not a clean process in the production environment, which is why we're excited to introduce material cards for pellet fed additive manufacturing. Material cards leverage material and process data to streamline production, bridge skill gaps, and improve reliability with third party materials. Here's how. Back here at our Tradesman Series P344, our industrial grade pellet fed 3D printing system capable of processing a wide range of performance thermoplastics. We like to talk about being process driven. So the foundation to our material card stems from two key sources, our material testing and assessment procedure, or MTNA, or our bead characterization system, or BCS. And these are procedures that are pretty critical to understand and identify all the key pro uh, process conditions to help give you some confidence in utilizing this equipment. So, on the screen here, we're going to be covering and talking about the collection of the uh, material analysis like drying temperature uh, or the environment like chamber temperature and flatten temperature. Um, the minimum print speed, maximum print speed, these are critical variables to really understand your ability to process small parts to large parts. Um, and also other information that's, that's worthy enough as a, an operator to understand density and strength of the material. The material testing and assessment procedure um, just gives us that, those variables to help us understand the material, but then again, we need to calibrate that so that you have a good understanding of being able to process a machine, you know, no matter where you're at. If you're in Arizona or you're in Maine. And so for us, we like to use our bead characterization system, which is a unique procedure for us to help identify and characterize the beads. And then we have the ability to be a data-driven process using bead area mode. When wanting to calibrate a material card and run our BCS, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our main screen and we are gonna first select a material. Now in this case, we're going to calibrate Sobix Thermocomp, which is a 20% glass fiber reinforced ABS. It's listed here in our dropdown. We're also going to select the nozzle. And in this case, we are going to be using the four millimeter that's pre-installed in the machine. Now when doing so, you're going to generate all those critical uh, process conditions that we just previously established on a material card. It's gonna load it now on the main screen. You're gonna see them and it's gonna allow an operator to preheat um, either their environment for their bed, their platen, or their chamber temperatures, but also their extrusion system, the uh, multiple heat zones that we have, top, middle, lower, and nozzle. So I'm gonna do so real quick and get this machine going. So now using a pair of calipers, you're going to go ahead and take some measurements of all of your rows. After taking your measurements, you're going to input the data here. So as an example, we're going to take measurements. And once we fully uh, complete the measurements, we're going to go ahead and record to card. All right, so we just got done calibrating material card. Now we're back to the main screen. And just for reference, we're going to go to the material database. And you can see that when I go back to Sobix Thermocomp 20% glass fiber reinforced material for a four millimeter nozzle, you can actually see the history log that we just created. So when you do a calibration, it's going to collect all that data and it's gonna load it back into the material database. And you're gonna see that for that date, for the operator, for the moisture, the batch number, and all the heating um, for the computer system or the environment like the plat and the, and the chamber, it's already saved. So now, going forward, when an operator wants to print a part, it's gonna reference that data. So for the machine, an operator is gonna to wanna to make sure that the material is dry, it's gonna make sure it's loaded and there's enough to actually handle the print. Um, they're going to go ahead and slice their part uh, per the, the values of the bead width and layer height that they need. And then they're going to load it up into the HMI. So right now, what we're gonna do is go ahead and load our part file. And once the part's been fully loaded, we're going to exit and go back to your main screen. So now you're ready to go for the part file and you're gonna make sure that your temperatures are set so that you're ready to go. We're gonna verify the nozzle diameter is what you've just uploaded or installed on your machine. 
and now you're gonna have the ability to preset your temperatures. Once those temperatures are set and they've reached the recommended um, value, then you're gonna be ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and print a part and uh, let's see what it looks like. A 3D printer that requires trial and error is not fit for production. It's only going to increase the stress, it's going to decrease the confidence level, it's going to add a bunch of cost and time, and for us to be able to provide the peace of mind, we have the material database and the material cards for our operators. So if you want to learn more about our database and adding material to it, you can reach us at www.juggerbot3d.com backslash material card. Thank you.